Welcome to another, uh, welcome live viewers and welcome replay viewers. Welcome to another uh, episode of Wag of the Tail on the Petscope TV, um, Periscope's first and uh, so far, as we know, only a network that's devoted all to, uh, devoted entirely to pets. Um, there's a full slate of shows. Um, hey, Therese, how are you? Um, there is a full slate of shows uh, on the Petscope TV. You can get more information and see the whole schedule at thepetscopetv.com. And um, hey, Don, how are you? I am Monique. Um, ooh, Thumper's Alley, good name for a rabbit show. Um, and I discovered uh, recently that if you go to thepetscopetv.com to look at the schedule, you c it is a Google Calendar, and you can simply um, subscribe uh to the calendar, if you have your own Google account, your own Google calendar, you can add the Petscope TV schedule right to your own um, Google calendar. What tail are we wagging today? Today we are going to rabbits, and uh, is today's topic. Um, first of all, let me just introduce my actor. Let me just welcome all the new arrivals, um, people who came in since I started the show. Um, thank you, for everyone, for um, for those who have shared, for those who have hearts, for those who are taking screenshots already. Um, my name is Randy Lyman. I'm the pet uncle, and you are watching Wag of the Tail. Um, oh, hi, new person, post live person 24. Well, welcome to the show. Yeah, I, you know what? I've been working with rabbits, which I'm going to talk about in um, a minute, and I, I sort of wish I could have one too, but um, I'm not sure I can really uh, quite have the right conditions for them uh, here. So, um, Wag of the Tail is a free range variety magazine show that is all about pets and animals and the world that we share with them. Um, it's every Monday at 8 o'clock a.m. Pacific Time, 10 o'clock Central, right here on the Petscope TV. So, as I said, we're going to focus on um, rabbits today. Um, what's my next slide? Oh, there's the title slide. Sorry, I should put it put that up earlier. Free range. Yes, that was a deliberate choice of words. Free range. Um, uh, Rabbits, in fact, are the third most popular small animal pet after dogs and cats in both the United States and um, and uh, Great Britain. It is, or the UK, um, whichever is the proper term for that. Um, they're actually the sixth most common um, pet of all after cats, dogs, birds, horses, fish, and then rabbits. But they're the third most um, uh, common small animal pets. So we're going to talk about why rabbits make good pets. We're going to go over some rabbit care tips, like the pros and cons of owning um, rabbits. Um, uh, we are going to follow one of the greatest rabbit adventures of all time, if you can imagine that. And we are going to play some uh, it's it's some trivia to see how well you know the world's most famous rabbits. And if you watched uh, the Petscope TV uh, Teresa's trivia night last night, then you will have a leg up, so to speak, on this. Um, but, uh, it is different. It is, it is different, although they're, it's, uh, kind of similar. So, um, I will be posting the show notes from today's show, um, at the pet Uh, a little later today, I was having some website technical issues, so I don't have it up there yet. Um, but first, uh, when we go to the news is our first segment. Um, some of you may remember that I've been working, doing some volunteer work with, um, rabbitrescue.org. Uh, it's a California rabbit rescue organization here, and they've been placing, um, they have uh, rabbits in Petco, Petco stores around the San Francisco Bay Area, and also in uh, Los Angeles as well, if you're down there. Um, and on Saturday, April 14th, they are planning to have a a uh, rabbit adoption day at one of the Petco stores here in San Francisco from 3 to 5 in the afternoon uh, that's Pacific time uh, on Saturday the 14th. So I, they're going to be, uh, uh, there'll be, I'm sure there'll be lots of kids and families. There's going to be a rabbit grooming lesson, which should be all kinds of fun. And I'm planning to um, scope that from my personal uh, Periscope account at the Pet Uncle. So um, I will definitely keep you all posted as um, I learn more. Hey, Donna, how are you? Good morning. Uh, I will post more about that on social media and here on Periscope and all that as the time comes up, but um, I'm planning to scope that, and that should be quite entertaining. So Saturday, um, April 14th. Um, let's see, what else? We, oh, uh, this weekend, next item here, um, this weekend, uh, Diane and I went to see Zootopia, uh, the Disney movie. Um, after it's released four weeks ago, and after four weeks, it is still um, number two at the box office. 
Um, hi, Diana. How are you? And hi, Positive24. Um, thank you for inviting people. And thank you, everyone, for all the hearts. So we went to see uh, Zootopia. So this, yeah, it is really good. That's what I wanted to talk about. Um, definitely go see Zootopia. It only came in second. It's been um, how do bunnies get along with cats? Save that question because actually they can get along just fine. Um, you, you know, cats sometimes, you know, Cats are predators and bunnies are prey, and so they'll go after them. But if you introduce them properly uh, at your home, uh, bunnies can get along just fine with cats and dogs and, and other pets. So um, Zootopia was really great. The, I got to say the first thing um, about Zootopia is the level of animation. You know, this is, this is done by the same people who did um, uh, uh, Frozen and a couple other um, things. And the animation, their skills in animation just keep getting better and better. And I have been a fan of these sort of computer animated movies since A Bug's Life came out in the mid 80s or the late 80s. That was the very first one of these things that it just showed the world of, of insects from their point of view. Uh, and they just keep getting better and better. But Zootopia is um, really fun. Yes, I loved Frozen too. And Z Zootopia is in in I don't know. In many ways, it's it's just as good. But Zootopia does something really different. It's this it's the story of the, an urban jungle is how they how they they build it. And it's all the animals, prey and predator. They all get along. But Disney does something. Um, See it in the theater. We saw it in 3D. It's really good in 3D. I don't like, I, I love 3D movies. Not all of them are done well, but um, Zootopia actually really benefits a lot from it, from the grand scale. It has like this avatar. If you saw the movie Avatar, where it has just like this fantastic scale where everything is so tall and so far away and versus so small, and, and Zootopia does the same thing. Um, it's just you really in this world. It's um, a sort of a city where all animals live together. Although I should say all mammals, there are only mammals in, um, in this movie, no other things. And Disney does something really unusual for Disney is they, they have this really strong political message, which is, a, you know, that has to do with, with racism and urban problems and things like that. And most reviewers really, um, really liked it, but there are some reviewers out there who were like, no live animals in the movie. It's all computer generated. It's all it's all animated um, in in this sort of computer generated stuff that they've been doing for years and have gotten really good with like showing the subtleties of fur and faces and and, and all that. So, um, so some people, some reviewers have thought that the political message got confused that they really just kind of got their metaphor all wrong and and all that. And honestly, if you look at it really closely, I, they actually have a point, but. Yeah, it's like the more you think about it, the more that you that you see that they're right. But I think that most people are not going to have that impression coming away from the movie. They're going to think it's pretty positive. Plus, fun movie, great animation. There's a story. There's some good little, you know, they take some jabs at um, uh, at Frozen, at the movie Frozen, at um, the show Breaking Bad, if you saw that, because it's all about... The movie is kind of seen as sort of a metaphor for the, the crack epidemic in our inner cities and all that. So, but it's really great, and it and um, I definitely say go see it if you like 3D movies. If they don't give you a headache, as they do some people, not me. Um, uh, yes, thank you, Therese, for pointing that out. And do please go see Zootopia. It's really fun. It's still in the box office. It only got knocked out of first place by Batman versus Superman, which opened this weekend. Um, and the other thing about Zootopia is the main character is a bunny rabbit, Judy Hopps, who becomes the first uh, the first rabbit to um, ever join the Zootopia police force. And so the movie is all about her proving herself as she solves uh, a case with um, with a sly fox whose voiceover is Jason Bateman, who has done all kinds of things, including he was in Arrested Development, which was a hilarious show. So go see uh, Zootopia. Um, go by yourself. You know, it's one of those movies where, you know, it's a kid's movie, but there's a lot in it for adults. And I will say any adult who, if you have a driver's license, you will laugh your head off at the scene in the DMV, um, in, in Zootopia. It was just the, the audience just bust up. It was all the grownups. The kids had no idea about it, but the scene in the DMV is hilarious. So I won't spoil it for you. Just go check it out. Go see Zootopia. It'll still be um, playing for a little while. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, if you are, yes, it's definitely, um, yes, 
it's since you mentioned it, it's with the sloths in the commercial. It is it's just a, the sloths just moving everything so slowly. It's a perfect metaphor for how we all feel when we go to the DMV. Um, if you are breathing and living above ground, then you have probably heard about the U.S. presidential race. But I'm not going to talk about the candidates or the primaries. What I've been wondering is, after November, what pet is going to be in the White House? That's the question I want to know. Um, and apparently someone... Yeah, the what? I know. If only. If only we could say that. Um, a, an online magazine called Polis that actually um, looked into this just before I did. I was sort of wondering about, yeah, wh who, you know, wh what pets do the, the candidates have? And somebody looked into this, and as Polis that um, reported, clearly there must be some connection between pets and winning the White House because every single president in history has had some kind of a pet. Um, and... Um, they wrote this in a story, it's it's undated story, but it was obviously written last year because they went and asked, there were like 18 candidates still there at the time, so this is a, an, an old story, but they went through all of them, including those who are no longer in the race, and asked them what kind of pets they have. So um, I'll have the link to this um, story on my, um, on my show recap, so you can check that out um, uh, later and, and go see what everyone has. But the Washington Post did a photo essay on um, presidential pets, on the presidents who have had pets. They have some photos. So um, we have President Lyndon Johnson had two beagles named imaginatively him and her. Um, President Nixon walked along, uh, has his, his Yorkshire Terrier, um, Pasha. This was a, a birthday picture. President Herbert, Herbert Hoover had a police dog named King Tut. Um, but it's not just dogs. I mean, most presidential pets have been dogs, but not all of them. There have been, according to the article, um, cats, birds, horses, ponies, goats, tiger cubs, alligators, bear cats, and, and that's even some of that's not even all of it. So, um, Mrs. Calvin Coolidge had a, a, a raccoon, as you can see here. Um, President uh, Taft had a cow. This is in front of the old. Um, yeah, I know. Who who knew? Who knew? So, but there's a great Washington Post story that has all these. And then, of course, Bill Clinton had socks the cat um, here speaking at a at a presidential press conference. Um, among yes, important people have yes a cow. I know. There's all who knew. There's all kinds of stuff. And on the article, there will be the link to it. Um, you can just see what what everyone else has had. Most of them have been dogs, but not all. Um, among the candidates who are still left, little is known. All we know is that um, Ted Cruz has a little dog, um, Snowflake, that his daughters love. But the others, we don't know. Um, Hillary Clinton, oh, thank you very much for saying that. I'm glad you're, um, I'm, I'm trying to find really interesting things. So I, I'm, I'm glad you like it. Thank you very much. Um, uh, where was I? Oh, uh, uh, Cruz has a dog. Um, Hillary Clinton uh, declined to answer the question when Paul is that asked, and the other um, candidates, including Donald Trump and Bernie Sanders, um, just did not respond to repeated inquiries. So we will just have to wait until um, November to find out what animal we will see in the White House. So um, thank you, everyone, for the hearts and for the sharing and everything so far. Um, you can, this is, if you have comments on the show, things that you'd like to say, where you want to, um, you know, check out the the, re, the full replay later on, or uh, some of the uh, show notes, or some of the other articles that, I, that I've that i written uh, that have been associated with these um, things. This is places that you can contact me. I'd love to hear, this is only my second episode. I'm really trying to do um, something, you know, kind of new and different, but that I'm familiar with um, in terms of a format on this show. So if you have any comments at all, any thoughts, any ideas, any suggestions for stuff I should cover, um, here's where you can reach me, and you can watch the replays of the show um, at wagofthetail.live, that's actually the catch account of the Pet Scope TV, and this is sort of the, the, the playlist um, that I'm doing. So uh, today I wanted, so I wanted to start by talking a little bit about um, rabbits as pets. Here's a picture of a cute little rabbit who we will see a little later on. As I said before, um, rabbits are actually the third most common uh, small animal pet in the United States and the UK. 
and um, the sixth most common overall, although the numbers are really small. There are something like, at least in the United States, there are something like 70 million dogs and 75 million cats as pets. If you can believe that, that's a lot of dogs and cats, but only about 3 million, a little over 3 million rabbits as pets in the United States and about 1 million um, in the UK. Those are the only countries I've found statistics for so far, but actually I'm going to sort of keep looking. Um, so, but nobody really knows. Rabbits are also about the third most common, or the third most common animal surrendered to shelters after dogs or cats because, um, and nobody really knows, unlike dogs and cats, no one really knows how many shelter rabbits there are, um, but they are there too. And so that's part of the reason that I, I work with this rabbit rescue organization is they are a shelter, a rescue, helping to um, find good homes for rabbits. Rabbits, in fact, for those who have them, make wonderful pets. Um, I had a, uh, have a, a friend who used to have a couple rabbits. She was always raving about how much she loved them. They're fun. They have personality. They love to play with toys. They, um, they are, um, they can be, they're very personable. They have individual personalities. They are entertaining. They can get along with dogs and cats if you have those as pets. Um, you just need to, um, Introduce them. You need to just take care and introduce them slowly the same way you would bringing any new pet into the home where you already have other other pets. They just need time to get used to each other. And yeah, sure, you know, cats and dogs, they like to chase rabbits, but you know, like all pets, are they... Uh, do you know if dogs eat rabbit poop? Um, that I don't know, but rabbits, rabbits eat rabbit poop. And this is kind of, it's like a disgusting but true little fact is that they have certain... Um, uh, certain p pellets that they, yeah, it is a good question. Well, they do. The thing is, it's not all of their poop, but at night they have these certain pellets and they excrete them and they eat them because those pellets contain various essential vitamins and minerals that for some reason they don't absorb in the food that they eat. Your sister's dog loved rabbit poop? Maybe, I don't know. There is... What can I say? But in in these particular type, it's not all rabbit poop. Some of it, they need to re-eat it in order to get those um, essential vitamins and minerals that for some reason that they don't absorb from the food. But mostly they do it at night, so you're not awake to see it. Um, rabbits, in fact, are also good because they tend to be most active. Um, can you do the same thing with cats, like put them in one room? Um, it's the same thing if you mean introducing them to to rabbits. Um, yes, you can. I mean, there's the whole there's a whole procedure for it. You want to at first keep them separated and keep the rabbit in a cage and let the rabbit and the cat get to know each other, you know, through the bars of the cage. And as they get more familiar with each other, um, you know, then things go from there. But it, it's kind of the same as with all um, with all pets. There are some downsides to um, to having a rabbit. There's not rabbits are not a starter. Pet. People think that they're cute. You can get them if you have little kids. Um, your dog, I'm not keeping track of whose dogs are eating all this, but I don't, man, <laughs> dogs. Okay, if they're enjoying it, then that's fine. Eating cat poo, eating rabbit poo, but you know, their dogs are dogs, I guess. Um, back on rabbits, they are not starter pets. They are, um, they actually require, they're not so hard to take care of, but they do require daily maintenance. Um, a dog can go for 12 hours or, or longer without eating and be okay. If your rabbit doesn't get fed for 12 hours, that can actually cause a fatal emergency that can kill it. They need to have constant food. They need to constantly have water. Um, they scare easily. You can actually give a rabbit a heart attack if you sort of sneak up behind it and scare it. Um, they like to chew on things. That's partly because they have an extra set of incisors in front that are constantly, constantly growing. Um, if you get bit by them, we have to go to the hospital. Um, not necessarily. Um, you know, rabbits need things like rabies vaccinations and, and others like, like anything else, but there's nothing inherently dangerous about a rabbit bite. It's, it would be the same as if, um, can be altered, but boy buns fertile up to four months after an injury. Oh, okay. That I didn't know, but part of the reason that rabbits can multiply so quickly is, um, they are are only in gestation for like 30 days and they can get pregnant again literally minutes after giving birth. So as as people who live in Australia can tell you, um, rabbit overpopulation has been um, a serious problem. Keep separate after neuter. Yeah, at first, although rabbits do really like to um, 
have companions and sometimes you know they can be pair bonded sometimes and so if you see a, a pair of rabbits at a shelter who are sort of pair bonded and just really close to um, close to each other the um, the the rescue or the shelter will only adopt them out as a as a pair um, rabbitrescue.org the, the one that I work with they, they do that they'll they'll keep pair bonded um, things together and because rabbits are always chewing on things you have to rabbit proof your home you have to make sure the cords electrical cords are put away because they'll chew right through those um, they'll chew your baseboards they'll chew your carpeting they like to dig they like to chew um, also they don't necessarily need a lot of veterinary care but they need special veterinary care. They have certain um, particular needs and things like antibiotics that may um, uh, work for dogs and cats um, can be uh, fatal or toxic to, to rabbits. If you're home all the time, you're probably a good um, good candidate for um, for having a rabbit because they just need they need daily care. If you're going to go away um, for any extended time, you've got to have someone come in and keep them with fresh water. Um, how to medicate? Oh, you have a tip on how to medicate? All right, that's that's good. But you need to just be careful. You need to go to a vet who knows something about rabbits, and and not all of them do. Um, jam, oral meds. That's if that'll get them to eat it. That's not a that's not a bad idea. Um, but definitely consult with a vet and um, really just find um, find a, a vet who who knows something about rabbits again, because not not all of them do. Um, you you do need to spay or, spay them or neuter them. Um, but they, uh, yeah, they can be just quite, um, you know, fun pets to have. They can be a lot of fun. You can cuddle them. You can play with them. If you saw, you know, the video that I made of that, um, one shelter rabbit and there've been other people volunteering for the group and have made other, um, other videos. So this, the organization has got quite active. And, um, like I said, look on, on August, sorry, April 14th, um, I will try to, uh, live scope from that pet adopt for the rabbit adoption day. So, in 1964, a British naturalist named Ronald Lockley published a book called The Private Life of the Rabbit. It's a factual book, tells about how rabbits live and all the, you know, the way that they live, what their habits are, what they're like. What is their lifespan? Um, a few years out in the wild, but a domestic rabbit in a good house, getting good care and good fed, can live like seven to ten years. That's actually a, 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 one of the positive one of the good reasons to think about getting a rabbit is they can live a long time they as long as a, a, a dog or cat they can easily go seven to ten years or more um living in a, in, in a good home so um can you adopt a rabbit if you have cats yes um you can it you need to talk to the shelter or where you're going to adopt them and, and work out how you're going to introduce the rabbit and the cat to each other um again that's just a process like bringing any new new pet into a home that already has pets they just need time to get to get used to each other. Um, so, uh, the Private Life of the Rabbit, published in 1964, became the form of the factual basis for another book published nearly a year, uh, sorry, a decade later. A work of fiction about rabbits who go on an unbelievable adventure. And some of you can already guess. Um, I'm talking about Watership Down. Where can you look for a rabbit to? Um, Go to PetFinder.com. That was a place that I looked. Um, go to PetFinder.com, and you can search for a type of pet, and you can search by zip code. I actually looked for rabbits, and I found like 4,500 rabbits just near where I live in Oakland, California. So, yeah, go to PetFinder. If someone can type that on, you can see it, but it's spelled just like it sounds, PetFinder.com. Type in your zip code, type in the type of pet you're looking, and you'll find something that's, that's local to you. Um, Watership Down was published in 1972, um, and actually Lockley and the author Richard Adams became, thank you for posting that, Diana, um, and the, uh, the two authors became friends and they later visited Antarctica. In 1978, Watership Down was made into a movie, and let me just say, this is one of those movies, it's like, you know, sometimes like Zootopia, I go see movies that like tell you about them, tell you to go see them. And other movies, I tell you I watch so that you don't have to. Um, Watership Down, the movie was okay. It was really nice animation. Story just kind of, I don't know, didn't have the highs and lows for me. But the book was fantastic. Um, you got to see, um, you got to go read the book. It was, I remember reading it when at... Um, Okay, I didn't see what that comment was. Yeah, the book was great. Read the book. Um, 
it's a travel adventure told entirely from the point of view of Rabbit. And it basically is the story of this um, warn of rabbits. And one of there's two brothers, Hazel, who's the leader, and Fiverr, his brother, who's kind of psychic. He gets a premonition that something really bad is going to happen to their warren. So he and Hazel and a bunch of others, they go off in search of a better place. And they find a better place called Watership Down. It's a funny name, but a down, that's a tip term in landscape for, for England. When you see like the soft rolling hills covered with grass and everything, that's called the Downs. Your sister accidentally stole that book. No, it was no accident. <laughs> I'm sure it wasn't. Um, and so they go to Watership Down and they find a really nice place, peaceful place to live. Uh, but then they come to the starting realization that they are not going to be there very long because um, there's no women in the war. And so they need to find some does, some female rabbits. And they hear of an, another large warren farther to the south that is like overpopulated, but it's ruled by this tyrannical rabbit named General Woundwort. And it's like a military dictatorship where no one's allowed out. And so they have to figure out how to break in and get some female rabbits and bring them back to Watership Down. And that's the whole, basically the whole plot of the novel is they leave their warren, they find a new place, and they got to get some women and bring them back. A female is called a doe, yes, and a male is called a buck. And I think baby rabbits are called kits, K-I-T-S. Um, so, oh, so this is a, a little shot from the movie, um, of all the, the rabbits who are on their way. And, you know, the way that Watership Down is written, it's a lot, you know, because it, it's told from the point of view of the rabbits. And when they come to a road, they, um, is that the same names for deer? I had no idea. That's interesting. Well, yeah, buck and doe, I knew. I didn't know that about, I actually never thought about that. Good idea. Um, so they go in and it's all told from the point of view of the rabbit. So when they come to a road or a train tracks or something, it's like these are like huge man-made monstrosities. And they don't know what they are. They don't know what they do. They don't know what these huge metal animals are that are rolling down these. And the whole adventure is it, it's these rabbits on this journey. And it, the thing is, it's a lot like watching the Lord of the Rings and going on their journey. And it's interesting because, you know, with, Frodo and Sam, they're going through all these landscapes that's told from their point of view in this really horrific thing. And like both the books come with maps. Um, this is Middle Earth, and you can see they go from the Shire, which is like here in the middle. They go over the mountains and down here to Gondor and Mordor. And Watership Down has um, a map where they start, where is it, kind of the lower corner, and they come up to here, which is Watership Down, and then they go south to Ephrafa, which is the name of the Warren, uh, the overpopulated one that they go to raid and then they come back to Watership Down. Well, whereas in Lord of the Rings, their journey covers like, yes, Warren, that is where rabbits live, although it's lowercase w, but uh, rabbits live in a, in a Warren, which is just a whole network of burrows and holes and tunnels and things that they live. Um, the journey in Lord of the Rings goes about a thousand miles. The journey in Watership Down is like three or four miles, you know, but it, but they make it seem like it feels, oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Um, it feels like Watership Down and here's Hazel and this is F Fiverr. Um, Watership Down, it's like, but the movie and also the movie, it's not really, I don't know, the name of their pack, um, which Warren or no, Watership Down is the name of the place, and Warren is the kind of place that, that rabbits li live in. So, no, not the name of the pack. Um, Watership Down, the movie, just like the book, actually, had it has violence, and there's attacks and fighting, and the rabbits, like, are trying to kill each other. Rabbits can be surprisingly um, vicious and, and, and aggressive at, at times. And they... Um, and there's an element of spirituality and the whole leg legends and their history and all that and how rabbits became tricky. So the movie is like okay to watch, um, but, you know, just didn't like shake me up quite like Zootopia. And a few years ago, <clears throat> some guy, I don't remember his name, was on a business trip to Oxford, which is actually near uh, Watership Down. And so on his trip, he took a little side trip and he went to the actual Watership Down and he took some pictures. And um, like a gaggle of geese, yes, um, he took some pictures. This <clears throat> is the actual Watership Down. And in the movie, they come across this field and they go up this little hill and up at the top of the hill is where they come across this nice field and they build this, their warren would have been located here. Um, 
And yeah, this is what it looks like. And when they head south towards Ephrapha, this is looking south. So they kind of are up up here at the top of the hill and they go south and they go off into the distance. And this is what it really looks like. But the way that it's written, you feel like it's Sam and Frodo going into Mordor. I mean, it just, everything is just of such a scale in, in the book. You know, everything, a group of bunnies called a group of bunnies. I don't know. That's a good question, actually. Um, maybe someone could find, that's a good question. Someone can find that out. Um, this is the actual Ephrapha. It's, it's um, really, you know, densely packed and, and very close in and where General Rumor kept control. But the book makes it feel like you're at the, at the Black Gate of Mordor. And when they're, that's it's just such an exciting thing to, to book to read. And when they make their escape from Ephra, a herd, okay, we all learned something else now today, a herd of rabbits. That's interesting that they would come in herds. Um, when they make their escape from Ephrathah, they escape down, they get into a boat, and they cut the boat loose, and there's a rain, and they're raging down the torrent, but in fact, they're just going down this little stream, you know, but it's one of the great things about the book is how everything that's so small just seems so big. And so, Watership Down, check it out. It's a great book. Like I said, the movie, yeah, you know, you can take it or leave it. Um, it had did have some good animation. It's got this very sort of gauzy storybook look to it. Um, a good book to recommend to a book club. Yeah, I did. It's, it's an interesting read. It's very different um, kind of thing. And it's, you know, I don't know how like deeply profound a book it is, but maybe it is. It's got, a, you know, there's, you know, what's really interesting and a good thing to discuss is like, there's a lot of like legends about like the sort of hero rabbit from the past and how he, um, you know the the trickster and how he managed to outfox you know the, the the princes and and all that and it's um so there's a lot of rabbit legend in it and how you know it's it's like rabbits are prey and the whole book and the movie are told from the point of view of rabbits are yeah do do look look at it for a book club I think it would be an interesting book just because it's a classic and it's just original and it's just a really good read he's a a, a great writer describing the landscape of everything it's just a very nicely written book. Um, it's, it's a good adventure. You get into these, um, the lives of these rabbits and, um, it's just a, check it out. I mean, I, I read it when it first came out in the seventies and then I just reread it again, um, a couple weeks ago and, and I really liked it just as much the second time around. Um, it was just, just very entertaining, very nice book. And, oh, I forgot to mention, you know, the guy didn't even try to write a book about rabbits. He wrote this, you know, I was showing the countryside up here. Um, he wrote this, uh, because the book just came out of stories that he used to just make up for his two young daughters as they were going on drives through the English countryside. And he would just make up these stories about rabbits to entertain the girls in the back seat. And they, um, um, is it better to get baby ra rabbits or adults? Um, I don't know. It could go, I think they, you know, after a certain age, you can get them. You wouldn't get them too young, I don't think. Um, but that would be something there. I'll have on the on the show recap and then actually in a blog post that I wrote about rabbits. There's a lot of resources to find out, um, you know, what you should look at. Definitely adopting, um, but find out what you need to. Uh, uh, there's a, just a lot of considerations before getting a rabbit. So Richard Adams, he was telling all these stories to keep his daughters entertained in the car, and they said, "Daddy, write it down. Daddy, write it down. Write it down." And so finally, he did. It took him like 18 months. He got the book got um, rejected several times until he found a, a one-man publisher in London, who had um, just published a nonfiction book about rabbits, and so he sent it to him. And the guy published it and wrote to a friend. He said, uh, I just decided to publish a book about rabbits where one of them has psychic powers. Do you think I'm crazy? Well, 40 years later, the book is published millions of copies and been translated into 18 languages. So, no, the guy obviously wasn't crazy, although in 1972, I'm sure it seemed like it because no one was doing anything like that. So to close out today's show, we're going to have um, a little fun. Therese did a little rabbit trivia last night, and um, she put up clues, and we had to guess what rabbit. And so we thought of this totally independently. I had this already done um, by the time uh, of last night's show. But we're going to do something a little similar. So I'm just going to show some rabbits, and you see just who can, uh, if anyone can guess who some of these are. Some of them are going to be easy. Some of them will be a little more challenging. And uh, you can see all of them and more 
Um, there's an article called The 23 Most Famous Bunnies Ever, and I have a link to that. That'll be on the recap page as well. So we'll just close it out with a little bit of fun. See if you can name this rabbit. Let's see. I mean, this is just going to be too easy. Certainly that one that everybody knows. Bugs Bunny. That is right. What's up, Doc? This is what's up. Who's this? I'm leaving clues in here. Everyone, everyone knows Bugs. Who is this rabbit? What is this rabbit's name? Rabbit, yes, it's just named Rabbit from Winnie the Pooh, who's always trying to borrow Rabbit's honey. How about this rabbit? Anybody can guess? You all know who? Bambi and Thumper. Thumper, that one goes to Halo Dog Training. No, not Thinker. Although, I don't know, I suppose. Um, so, would it be okay to get a rabbit if you're getting a kitten? Um, quite possibly. Um... Yeah, you're going to disqualify yourself. I disqualified myself, except for the couple that I knew people didn't know, because they were just, um, uh, they just weren't getting. So, um, yes, Thumper. Here's another Disney rabbit. Anyone know who this rabbit is? And how far back this rabbit goes? Ooh, I'm seeing a deafening silence so far. Mickey? No, that is actually not Mickey. Although, I, I, it is the resemblance. Stretchy Mickey? No, no. This is actually Oswald, or Lucky Rabbit. This was a Disney icon character that goes back to the 1920s. Yeah, I know, this was a hard one. I never knew about this one either. You can learn more when you go check it out on that website. But this is Oswald, Lucky Rabbit. Um, goes back to the 1920s, so almost 100 years old, an early, an early Disney character. How about this rabbit? I know you know this because I <laughs> Therese used the exact same illustration, except with a white background last night. Um... He's late. He's late for a very important date. No, nobody's guessing, or maybe people are just typing hate. No. What? I think you meant late. Hair. Uh, no, not the mark. No, there are actually two rabbits in, in Alice in Wonderland. Yes, this is the white rabbit. The March Hare <clears throat> is another um, rabbit in Alice in Wonderland, or a hare, actually, um, who's al uh, in the tea time scene, but the... Um, is it okay to feed wild rabbits? That I don't know the answer to. Um, if you can get close enough to them, maybe it's fine, but it depends what you feed them, I suppose. Um, who is this rabbit? This was another one from last night. Uh, a story of how rabbits become real, of how toy rabbits become real. The Velveteen Rabbit. Yes, lovely illustration. How about this rabbit? Another Disney character you know, from a movie that had its political overtones. Any guesses on this? This was from, the movie was Song of the South, you know, zippity doo da, zippity a. Yes, you know that one, oh, Therese can answer. You know who this one is. If no one else knows the answer, Therese can answer. Let's see, Teen Coach Diva. Hi, Teen Coach Diva, welcome. All right, this is Br'er Rabbit from the uh, the Song of the South, from all those stories. Br'er, yes, B-R-E-R, -E yes. Okay. Who's this rabbit? Another one from last night. From a classic movie. No, this is not Roger Rabbit. That's Jimmy Stewart. Harvey, yes, Harvey the Invisible Rabbit, the six foot... Three rabbit. He was six foot three in the play, but Jimmy Stewart was James Stewart was six foot four, and so he's looking up. And so in the movie, the rabbit's more like six eight, but he's actually six three in the script. Here's another. This is a scary rabbit. Here's a, tri a tricky question. Anyone know this rabbit? This is this is from a cult from a cult movie, a really bizarre cult movie. No idea. This is, this is, anyone else? Yeah, ah, no, this was very scary. This is Frank, the doomsaying rabbit from the movie Donnie Darko. Donnie Darko is a really freaky but really good sort of cult classic film. And there's a, yes, it's a scary rabbit who appears to him in a vision and tells him that the world is going to end in 28 days and so many hours and so many minutes. All right, enough scary rabbit. Who is this? No, it's not everyone's kind of movie. I really liked it. It was really, really well done, but it was a pretty freaky movie. 
So who is this rabbit? This is Roger Rabbit. This is one of the first movies that blended um, animation with live characters like this. This goes back to the um, 1988, if you can believe it, that long ago. How about this one? This one, if there's not a clue right in the middle of there, then I don't know what it is. You all saw this one last night, too. The Energizer Bunny. I was in, when I was living in Prague in the early 90s, there was a movie that came out, American movie, and I forget which one it was, but somewhere in the middle of the movie, the Energizer Bunny just starts going across the screen, and all the Americans in the audience just bust a gut laughing at this. And all the Czechs looked at us and went, what? <laughs> Why is this rabbit so funny? And so we all had to explain to them the Energizer Bunny after the movie was over. All right, a couple more, just a couple more, and then we'll close it out. Who is this bunny? Another one that you saw last night. The mascot for a well-known, uh, ah, you're both close, you're both close. First appeared with the strawberry-flavored Nestle's Quick, and later moved to chocolate and changed the logo from a Q to an N. This is the Nesquik Bunny. The Nesquik Bunny, yes. Um, he was uh, been their mascot since, it was originally named Quickie, he's been a mascot since 1973, and then they changed him to brown and changed the logo to an N in 19, uh, sorry, in 2003. Who's this? You know this one. Because these are for kids, and we were all kids once. The Trix Rabbit. That's right. This is the Trix Rabbit. And now, the last one. This is a trick question here, but let's see if you know. Who is this rabbit that we saw earlier? And if you have small kids, then you may well be a shoe in for this one. But this rabbit has a name and is a public figure now. Any guesses? Dally, no. No, Easter, no, not the Easter Bunny. Not not Cadbury, not Cadbury. This is, I will tell you, this is Cinnabon. Cinnabon is the real Trix Rabbit. A couple years ago, General Mills went on a camp, or started a campaign to remove all artificial colors and flavorings from their food or from their cereals and stuff by 2017 and so as part of that campaign they decided to get an actual natural rabbit um, and so they did a search they put out a search they looked at like 7500 pictures of rabbits and finally um, pulled uh, this chose um, this Cinnabon and you can see um, Cinnabon is apparently on the box of tricks but yeah this is part of their um, their campaign that they've been um, Trix was on my lunch box. Yes, this was part of their campaign for to put in all natural. So Trix, uh, I believe, all is already all natural flavors and all natural colors, and so now there's an all natural Trix rabbit. So um, that is my show for today. Thank you for um, for staying with me all this time. We've gone oh well over my half an hour, but thank you for everyone for staying with me. Thank you for all the shares. Thank you for all the hearts. Um, this has been uh, The World According to Rabbits on Wag of the Tail. And you can catch the replays um, here at wagofthetail.live. That's the catch account on the Petscope TV. And um, so follow, if you obviously are watching the Petscope TV, um, in two hours from now, or a little under two hours, um, Melissa with Tort Rescue Talks will be coming on. So check out and we can learn all about uh, animals with scales and shells. And um, this is where you can contact me with a DM, with an email, check out the website and the recaps and some of the other um, articles I have. Because a lot of these shows, at least right now, I'm basing them upon um, blog posts that I've already written. So you can learn more about rabbits and get resources there. And please do let me know what you think of the show. And if you have any ideas, like I said, I'm trying some new and different things here and um, spending a lot of time putting these episodes together each week. So I, I absolutely would love to hear from you. Just um, drop me a line at any of these places. Follow, uh, it's actually follow the, at the pet uncle. The word the is in there, but um, you can see that. So um, next week I'll be working on a show and we'll be looking at something very new and different next week um, that has to do with the science of animals. So that's going to be on the site for next week. So check out Wag of the Tail. It's live Mondays at 8 a.m. Pacific, 10 a.m. Central here on the Petscope TV 
get the whole schedule at thepetscopetv.com. And uh, thank you again for watching and sticking with me. Thank you, replay viewers, for watching, and thank you for all the hearts and for Therese and the whole uh, crew at the Pet Scope TV. And it's quite a quite a slate of shows. So, thank you very much. I'm going to call it a day, and um, thank you. I'm glad you thought so. So I will see you all later. All right, have a good Monday.